Here's a quick video that's going to teach you how to use long division to divide two polynomials. So our goal in this lesson is to be able to divide 4x cubed plus 9x minus 12 by this binomial 2x plus 1. Now there's two ways to do this, long division or synthetic division. Synthetic, is, synthetic division is like a kind of shortcut um, that I'll show you how to do in a different tutorial. This tutorial is all about long division. So before we actually do the long division of these polynomials, before we do this complicated question, it's going to be important that you understand how to do long division when we just have two constant terms, like how do we do 152 divided by 12 using long division? Well, you would first start by writing your dividend here, your divisor here, and then follow these four steps right here. You're always going to be following these four steps, divide, multiply, subtract, repeat. So we start off by taking uh, the first term it, we, we start by looking at the first term in our dividend and we see how many times does our divisor go into that. So how many times does 12 go into 1? Well 12 doesn't go into 1 so we can't do that so we'll look at the first two terms in the dividend. How many times does 12 go into 15? Well it goes into it one time so we'll write a 1 up here. That's our divide step. Next we do multiply. We multiply our quotient multiplied by our divisor. So 1 times 12 is 12 that's our multiply step. And then we move on to the subtract step. So we'll do 15 minus 12, which is 3. That's our subtraction step. And then we bring down the next term in the dividend, and we repeat the process all over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how many times does 12 go into 32. Well, it goes into it twice, so we write that in our quotient. So that's our divide step. Now we multiply, so 2 times 12 is 24. Then we move on to the subtraction step. 32 minus 24 is 8. Since there are no more terms to bring down, this is what we call our remainder. So we've completed the division, but an important thing to know is how do we write our answer to this division? So two ways we can do it. So we can write it in quotient form. So 152 divided by 12 equals our quotient, 12, plus the remainder over the divisor, plus 8 twelfths, which we would reduce to 2 thirds. So that's one way to write it. The other way to write it would be to write it using the multiplication statement we could use to check our division. So how do we check if we did the proper division? So 152 equals our divisor, 12, multiplied by our quotient, 12. So 12 times 12 is 144. So it's, that's not quite equal to 152. It's actually 8 short. That's why 8 is our remainder. So to make this um, make this equation true, we would have to add our remainder to the end of the product of our divisor and our quotient. So those are the two ways that we can write our final answers. Let's go ahead and now try and follow these same four steps in order to divide these two polynomials. So we start by setting it up the same way. So we write our divisor out here, and we write our dividend under here. So 4x cubed, and notice this is a degree 3 polynomial. So if your dividend is degree 3, that means you need to have a degree 3, 2, 1, and 0 term in your dividend. Now I don't see a degree 2 term, so I have to add a 0x squared in here. Each degree term has to be represented in your dividend and divisor. So 4x cubed plus 0x squared plus 9x minus 12. And I'm just going to flash on the screen that rule that I just talked about. So whenever you're doing long division or synthetic division, which you'll learn later, Make sure you follow these rules. So the terms have to be arranged in descending order of degree. That's the first thing. Notice it goes degree 3, 2, 1, 0. And in the divisor, it's degree 1, 0. So they're in descending order. And 0 must be used as the coefficient of any missing powers of the variable in both the divisor and the dividend. So notice we were missing a degree 2 term for in the dividend. So we had to put in a 0x squared. OK, now that we have it set it up properly, Let's follow those same steps of divide, multiply, subtract, repeat, and let's go ahead and figure out what the quotient is when we go when we divide these polynomials. So first thing we have to do is figure out how many times does 2x plus 1 go into 4x cubed. So in order to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to actually do the first term in your dividend divided by the first term in your divisor. So do 4x cubed divided by 2x. So well, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and x cubed divided by x is x squared. 
and make sure you are lining up like terms. So when I did my division here, so when I did this first step, I got a degree two term. Make sure that's above the degree two term in the dividend. So that's the division step. Now we do our multiply step. So I have to multiply the term in the quotient by the entire divisor, by the 2x plus 1. So the 2x squared needs to be multiplied by 2x, which is 4x cubed. And then it needs to be multiplied by the 1, which gives us positive 2x squared. That's our multiply step. Now we move on to subtract. So I subtract my like terms. And notice the like terms are lined up in the dividend. Degree 3, degree 3, degree 2, degree 2. Let's subtract our like terms. 4x cubed minus 4x cubed is 0. 0x zero squared minus 2x squared is negative 2x squared. We then bring down the next term. Bring down the 9x. And we repeat the process. So now we're on to repeat. So we're going to once again do the first term in the dividend divided by the first term in the divisor. So if we do that, negative 2x squared divided by 2x, well negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, and x squared divided by x is x. And I lined up the degree 1 term in the quotient with the degree 1 term in the dividend. Now we move on to multiply. Negative 1x times 2x plus 1. So negative 1x times 2x is negative 2x squared, and negative 1x times 1 is negative 1x. Now we subtract our like terms, negative 2x squared minus negative 2x squared is 0x squared, and 9x minus negative 1x is 10x. We bring down our last term, and we repeat, we repeat the process one final time. First term in the dividend divided by first term in the divisor. 10x divided by 2x. So 10 divided by 2 is 5x divided by x is 1. So all we're left with is a 5 as the last term in our quotient. Now multiply 5 times 2x plus 1. So 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times 1 is 5. Do your last subtraction. Negative 12 take away 5 is negative 17. And since there's no more terms to bring down, that's our remainder. So now we can write our final answer. So we're, we can write our final answer in two ways, just like we did before. So we could write it uh, use it in quotient form or using the multiplication statement that we could use to check our answer. So I'm first going to write it in quotient form. So our original division question was 4x cubed plus 9x minus 12 over 2x plus 1. And we have figured out that that's equal to our quotient, so it's equal to 2x squared minus 1x plus 5, 2x squared minus x plus 5, plus our remainder over our divisor. So plus negative 17 over 2x plus 1, which I'll just write as minus 17 over 2x plus 1. That's one way to write your final answer. The other way to write your final answer would be using the multiplication statement that could be used to check your division. And we can write that statement by writing our dividend, so 4x cubed plus 9x minus 12, being equal to our divisor, which was 2x plus 1, being multiplied by our quotient, which was 2x squared minus x plus 5, and then don't forget to add in your remainder, so plus negative 17, which I'll write as minus 17. And this is a good way to actually check and make sure you did your division properly. You could actually multiply this out, do the multiplication, 2x plus 1 times 2x squared minus x plus 5, and then subtract 17 and make sure it equals the dividend from the original question. So that's a good way to check if you actually did the division properly. Okay, so uh, the next video I'll post will be about synthetic division, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you'll get notified when I post that, and also you can go to jensenmath.ca for uh, all the supplementary material for each of these videos.